Hello friends, welcome to yet another intriguing edition of Rahul's Advanced Biology. Today I'll bring you a very ecstatic topic known as COVID-19 and its alternative receptor CD147 or cluster of differentiation 147. So for the starters, I would like to tell you that this specific SARS-CoV-2 virus which causes the disease COVID-19 has been termed as a global pandemic by the World Health Organization. More than 5 million people have already been affected by this disease and more than 3 lakh people have already lost their lives. So scientists throughout this globe have been trying very meticulously in order to come up with various vaccine regimens and various drug types in order to curtail and curb this specific pandemic. Now in my previous videos I have already talked about the virology, the RNA dependent RNA polymerase, the specific drug regimens like hydroxychloroquine, chloroquine plus azithromycin, remdesivir, tocilizumab and so on. So today I have chosen a very specific topic which is not talked about a lot but which is extremely significant and relevant. That is the CD147. It, it is an alternate receptor. So we all know for a fact that the angiotensin converting enzyme isotype 2, AH2, which I have also talked about in my previous videos, is, uh, is the specific primary receptor for SARS-CoV-2. And then first the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein is cleaved by a specific serine transmembrane, serine protease TMPRSH2. Then it generates two specific subtypes or two specific S1 and S2 domains. S1 is the receptor binding domain, S2 is the membrane attachment domain. And why are the S1 domain? The S1 domain attaches specifically primarily to the AH2 receptor expressed on heart cells, kidney cells, the type 2 pneumocytes, the type 1 pneumocytes, also on the ciliary epithelial cells, the goblet cells of the nostrils, the endothelium and so on. But the scientists have come up with an assay, with various assays they have described and they have found out that CD147, the assays they used were co-immunoprecipitation, ELISA, also immune electron microscopy to reveal that CD147 is also a viable secondary, messenger, secondary receptor for SARS-CoV-2. So SARS-CoV-2 can also attach to CD147 for getting viral ingress. So for the cell types, specific cell types which do, which do not express H2 and which expresses the CD147 like T cells, dendritic cells. Also some epithelial cells at the basal surface express the CD147. So this is a very attractive target for SARS-CoV-2 to get in. And if we can curb this specific target, a specific receptor, then we could curtail or curb this SARS-CoV-2 pandemic and the severity of the COVID-19 disease. We could also till an extent or to an extent reduce the ARDS, the acute respiratory distress syndrome and the viral sepsis that follows in critically if, or severely ill COVID-19 patients. Now what is CD147? CD147 or cluster of differentiation 147 is present on chromosome 19, petite arm or short arm. It has got 10 exons. It is a heavily glycosylated protein, means the glycosylation happens after the translation, there is a post translational modification happening in the Golgi apparatus. Then, it is a single pass transmembrane protein with a molecular mass of 50 to 60 kilodaltons. What happens is, the CD147 is also known as basigin or it is also known as the emprin, extracellular matrix metalloproteinase inducer. It belongs to the immunoglobulin superfamily. It is of two specific types, Basagin 1 and Basagin 2. So Basagin 1 specifically is of retinal type. It has got three immunoglobulin domains and Basagin 2 is of mainly general expression type which has got two immunoglobulin domain and Basagin 1 has got three immunoglobulin domains. So specifically Basagin 2 is what we will be talking about. Now it can go for it can either participate in trans signaling, meaning that any other molecule can come and bind at the cell surface to the CD147 or to the cis signaling. It can also participate in cis signaling, that is the same molecule, one of the same molecules or one of the molecules of the same cell binds to the CD147 expressed on the same cell, that is the cis signaling like GLUT1, CD44 and trans signaling is mediated by GPV1, etc. Now, what happens is, this specific CD147 commences its pathway upstream of the matrix metalloproteinases, MMPs. So these are specific enzymes, specific proteins which are responsible for pro-inflammatory cascade. And we know that the cytokine, res cytokine response syndrome or the cytokine storm, more layman term, is the downside or is the epicenter of causing severe illness in SARS-CoV-2 induced COVID-19. 
it causes the ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, putting the patients on ventilator and also sometimes taking away their lives, jeopardizing their lives. Then, so this CD147, what happens is it has also been found to express on RBCs and plasmodium falciparum also binds to the CD147, right? In cases of cancer, tumorogenesis, the CD147 has been found to be upregulated. In case of you can say diabetes where the specific glucose level is more than 25 millimolar, the CD147 has been found to be specifically upregulated. In case of cancer, the CD147 stabilizes the lipid rafts, right? Its upregulation stabilizes the lipid rafts as it makes the cells secrete more hyaluronic acid. In case of diabetes, this upregulation of CD147 would jeopardize the patient, would make the patient more susceptible to contracting SARS-CoV-2. Because we have seen that in my video also, a DPP-4 inhibitor video, I have shown that diabetic patients are more susceptible, are more vulnerable towards SARS-CoV-2. So this is one plausible, another one plausible reason, concrete reason that diabetes or high glucose level in the blood, high glycation level in the blood increases the level of CD-147 as the inflammatory markers also increase. And thereby since CD-147 is a secondary messenger or is a secondary receptor for the tethering or binding of SARS-CoV-2, so the patients who are already diabetic and who have and who do not possess diabetic control, whose diabetic range or whose sugar levels, blood glucose levels are not in control, they are at maximum risk. They are extremely susceptible towards developing COVID-19 to a very severe form because they are expressing CD-147 at a higher level which is a secondary messenger or a secondary receptor for SARS-CoV-2. So thereby they will be accelerating the viral ingress. Now azithromycin I had talked about in my previous videos, azithromycin has been found to inhibit the invasion of RBC cells by this specific plasmodium falciparum which I talked about which causes malaria. Azithromycin is a macrolide class antibiotic. It specifically binds to the 50S ribosome and inhibits the peptidyl transferase reaction. It has also been found to inhibit the CD147 via downregulating the CD147. Doxycycline, another antibiotic, has been found to downregulate CD147 in gallbladder. And specific azithromycin, specifically, can also sometimes reduce the expression of IL6. I have talked about IL6 in my video of tocilizumab, where I have talked extensively about the site of Annelise syndrome and the ARDS because IL-6 plays the epicenter, plays the most significant role in the perpetuation of ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome and the cytokine response which is again perpetuated by IL-6, then IL-1, then TNF-alpha, then MCP, then MIP, etc. Also it has been found that the administration of azithromycin causes interferon mRNAs to be upregulated thereby it also enhances the you can say defense system, the innate defense system of the immune system. So azithromycin could be a very good combination and thereby we can postulate that azithromycin being an antibiotic can act as an antiviral agent, as a possible, as a plausible antiviral agent against this SARS-CoV-2 because it can downregulate or inhibit or it can suppress the CD-147 level which is a secondary receptor for the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Also a drug specific recombinant monoclonal antibody humanized type known as meplazumab has been used. It's an anti CD147 humanized monoclonal and recombinant antibody. It has been developed and which is being used in China in phase 2 clinical trial and this specific drug is being tested against the specific COVID-19 which happens in the people. And the scientists are really hoping that this would reduce or this would plummet down the infectivity of the viral or the viral tropism as it would deteriorate the viral ingress via the CD147 secondary receptor that is used by SARS-CoV-2. So that's all the conceptual progress you needed to attain in order to comprehend this lecture. If you have liked the video, kindly hit the like button. And also in my 
description box of the video, I have provided the links of the various research papers and my Facebook page. So do like my Facebook page if you have liked this video and you can directly contact me via messenger. I will be replying to your queries as soon as possible. Otherwise, if you have any other queries in mind, you can also post them unhesitatingly in the comment section below. You will get my prompt reply. And again, kindly subscribe to my channel Rahul's Advanced Biology and do not forget to hit the notification bell so as to be notified whenever my next video comes online. Thanks a lot. See you soon.